Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. This is our Meet the Faculty webinar for the Broadcasting and Online Media Program at Van Arts. We are coming to you live from Vancouver. Uh, some of us at Van Arts, others of us close to Van Arts. So uh, my name is Ken Preby. I'm the Communications and Student Services Manager for Van Arts, and I'm here to uh, moderate our wonderful panel of uh, instructors. So I'm going to have everyone go around and uh, just give us a little introduction, who you are, your name, and a little bit of your, uh, your career background. Tell us a little bit. So let's start with uh, Martin Strong over on the right. Hey, thanks, Ken. Um, I'm Martin. That's You can see my name there, right there. Um, I'm the uh, department head of broadcasting and online media. Uh, along with uh, Scott, Patrick, and Luke, other instructors here. We have a few more as well. Um, I'm a, a radio guy. That's my background. I worked in radio pretty much my whole life. I started at CFOX Radio in Vancouver. Uh, I did a show on CBC Radio called Radio Shangri-La, which was a, a lounge music cocktail show, which was kind of funny. Uh, I played Marty Beaumont in the show. Um, Played a lot of swinging cocktail music. Um, and then I worked at Rock 101. Uh, I did the morning show on Rock 101 for 11 years with uh, Bro Jake. Bro Jake Edwards. It was the Bro Jake show. And that was pretty popular. Uh, we were quite often number one, 25 to 54 adults. <laughs> and nice. as the ratings go, that's a good place to be. Um, so it was a rock show. It was kind of funny. I was sort of the, the co-host. I, I read the news and kind of was, I like to think I was kind of funny. Um, and, uh, and then I, uh, <laughs> I, I've sort of dabbled in teaching and then I left rock 101 and, uh, I worked for a while at roundhouse radio, uh, the ill-fated local Vancouver radio station. I'm currently doing uh, voice work as well as teaching, as well as being the uh, the department head. I've been the department head for about uh, five years now. And um, uh, as well, I kind of dabble in voice work. I'm uh, the narrator of a TV show called Jade Fever, which is on um, Discovery Canada. And it's, what's the date today? It's the 21st on the 21st. Season seven hey. will premiere on Discovery Canada, and I'll be the narr I'm the narrator of the show. I've been there for seven years, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a really cool show. It's a reality show about jade miners, and it's on in Australia, Italy, England, and a bunch of other places. Uh, wow. That's pretty cool. And uh, and I do a lot of stuff in my studio. I don't do that at home, but I do a lot of stuff in my studio here, which is where I am right now. This is. Uh, my son's old room i've turned it into a recording studio and uh, i do a lot of um a lot of voice work i do a lot of auditions i do everything from on hold messages when you phone somewhere and you're on hold and so, thank you for calling i do that oh. in here and in stores like nesters if you walk into nesters market and you might hear hey halibut is on sale uh that's me in the thing and wow. uh, i was just doing some of that like half an hour ago and um yeah so that's what i do and uh, i'm the uh i'm the department head but i'm also a teacher uh i don't know if you want to get into that now do you want to uh about what what i teach or i feel like uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that in the things. next come around yeah. yeah the next okay so that's that's me all right martin in a nutshell very yeah. cool who wants to go next we're gonna let you guys fight it out here yeah. draw straws a little bit we Go, go, Luke. go Luke. I don't, yeah. Let me introduce Luke. All right. Okay. Uh, well, segue because I'm kind of because I'm kind of that's I'm part and parcel with Martin actually. Yeah. Uh, we'll, 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 go, we'll go zigzag here. All right. Let uh, me introduce you, Luke. I met you uh, at Roundhouse Radio, and we uh, we've known each other ever since. And he's been on board here a couple of years. And you tell us about yourself. Okay. Luke. Thank you. Yeah. I met. I did meet you at Roundhouse Radio. But uh, my background, by the way, my name is Luke Vision. Uh, I also go by a moniker by the name of Luke Meat as a journalist and online blogger uh, and DJ. Um, I've been in radio now for, oh boy, since 1999. Uh, my start was actually a different path. It was uh, college radio. I got involved with CITR 101.9 FM at the University of British Columbia back then. And I had a one-hour show, uh, volunteer, started out. Um, 
but I started uh, hanging out at the station. I was writing for their magazine, Discord, uh, which still exists, by the way. Check it out. Um, but I, the music director job, which was originally a student position throughout the university, uh, needed a staff. It needed to become a full time job. Uh, because the students, it was really, really crazy and scattered. So I, in the in my first forays into CITR, is I turned the music director job into a full paid position throughout, um, and I was there for ten years as music director and as an on air host and as an and, and as an educator because uh, I trained volunteers and and whatnot. Um, all the while, you know, DJing my own show, um, organizing all of the music library, all that kind of stuff, and uh, being kind of like, we were all kind of like the face of CITR throughout the uh, first decade of, of the 2000s. Uh, I branched off into commercial radio. After that, I uh, worked as a remote engineer, was my first job into commercial radio. And what a remote engineer does is that uh, you don't see him too much now these days with uh, COVID, but uh, back in the day, uh, radio stations would set up a booth outside and go, hey, we're outside the uh, Kingsgate Mall, having a b -b 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 you know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Scott got a laugh about a Kingsgate Mall. We've never done a thing at Kingsgate Mall, by the way. <laughs> but uh, uh, that would be awesome if it, if it happened. But but no, but I, I was working with Chorus, which is actually coincidentally enough what Martin brought up was Rock 101. I worked with Chorus Entertainment, which is Rock 101, C Fox, CKNW. And I was the, anytime that we were on location, I would do that. But I segued myself into being a board operator and a producer for all three of those stations. And then I actually, Martin brought up the, uh, he said ill-fated. I don't, I don't know if that's a great term for it, but I got out of my roundhouse radio and that's where I met. Martin. It was a great station. It was one. a great, we, a great station. We just, they just didn't have any money. That's the problem. Uh, it wasn't due to lack of talent or, or integrity, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I was a board operator there, a producer there. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, I slowly kind of, I still DJ. I still, uh, you know, I, uh, but, oh yeah, we're going to talk about what we teach later. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, in a cool band called Stork. What's that? You're in a cool band called Stork. Oh, I, that's, uh. yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that's, a, that's kind of, that's all, that's pretty much about me is, uh, I'm a music dork and, uh, you know, I'll teach you. Uh, we'll talk about teaching later. Okay. Yeah. Move it on. Okay. All right. Let's bounce up to Scott there. Yeah, my name's Scott Hastings. Um, hi, I'm, Scott. Uh, <clears throat> hi. Uh, <laughs> I've been, uh, um, I, uh, I guess, an independent media producer for the last uh, 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. um, in the late 90s uh, or mid 90s, I, I saw, uh, I think it was Toy Story that got me interested in animation. Um, that led me into video editing. Uh, that led me into sound design, soundscapes for movies. Um, uh, much like Luke, I'm a musician as well. Um, and um, uh, I started scoring uh, student films uh, back in the day. Um, and uh, before that, I was uh, did, did a bit of print work or throughout my career. I've been working in the print industry and, and producing things for uh, posters, business cards, uh, logo design, webs, and it eventually led to the the online getting into web development um and things like that so uh, i'm very much a, a jack of all trades when it comes to the digital media and that's sort of my specialty and uh, yeah uh, yeah creating uh media for uh, various mm. projects and i've worked on a lot of different things um i actually recently just remembered that some of the animations that i did actually played at the sundance film festival in 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, i've made award-winning computer animation um, music videos uh, and uh, and I do a bunch of um, I guess like uh, video editing and anim uh, like motion graphic animations and things like that for uh, uh, whatever company needs me um, mm -hmm. and a, a lot of video editing uh, as well, um, including some of the stuff at Fan Arts. Uh, yeah, 
produced some of the, the uh, commercials and uh, interviews for Van Arts, which is fun too. Yeah. Yeah. And Scott is is being very humble because uh, he's a very creative guy, lots of interesting ideas, and he does voices and all that stuff. And also a wizard when it comes to uh, software like uh, Adobe Premiere and a, you know, Adobe Audition and all like video editing and and even Photoshop, all these things. Whenever you have a question, you ask uh, Scott and uh, mm-hmm. he seems to know it in a weird, crazy, weird, yeah. almost. Well, I mean, way. I've been using Photoshop since 1993, right? Uh, <laughs> Adobe, Adobe Premiere since 1997 um, and uh, been playing with audio um, and editing audio since the mid nineties uh, digitally. So it's, uh, yeah, when you've, when you've been around software that long, you kind of get to know it pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And you play in a couple bands too. I, I you're, do. You're yeah. a, you have a beautiful voice and you uh-huh. sing in a few bands. Yes. I, in the, your, in your time, in your years. Uh, yep. Not, yep. Not lately, but uh, well, we've okay. we, when the restrictions are lower, we we and then and the weather's nice. We've been getting together in the backyard. Yeah, that's good. Not, not the whole band because I've got a, a nine piece band uh, that that wow. I sing that I sing for. But uh, um, but yeah, we, so we can't have all our band's too big to get together. At the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's Very been hell cool. on the ska industry. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very nice. Okay, and then last but not least, Patrick, tell us about. Tell us about all things Patrick. Uh, I am the computer nerd of the group, I guess. Uh, meaning that um, I started off uh, with uh, being in the right place at the right time when the internet was getting popular in the mid-90s. And um, I had a website that ran for 10 years that was talking about movies and development. And it started off as a hobby and it eventually to a full time job with four people on staff before I sold the company off. Um, it's a lot of fun. I got to see the internet really start off and take off, and then turn into like part of the small, the the, the junior size monster that it is today. Um, because of that uh, success of that website, I got to meet uh, a ton of people in um, Hollywood show business. I got to go on dozens of sets. Um, got to see a lot of great stuff and a lot of goofy, slimy stuff from Hollywood. Um, but the most important thing was I got to get firsthand experience about what eventually became uh, content marketing and digital marketing before there were even terms applied to it. And uh, once I sold my company off, I then um, did some uh, work for a couple of American companies, being their editor-in-chief online. I was um, uh, I got to do a bit of editorship for a magazine back when it was still around a little bit and I, I was really fun um, and then I started getting involved in digital marketing with digital agencies around 2004 2005 and that's when the terms like search engine optimization search engine marketing pay-per-click uh, content management, the dawn of social media, all of that stuff started coming into play. And it was all the things that I learned and they just were identified by name. So I really loved being able to come up with a creative part of strategies and work with businesses to make uh, revenue happen for them. So I had a lot of fun doing that. I did that for about 10 years and then I switched over for a couple of years and I was uh, an executive director for association in British Columbia that talked about uh, the creative technology industries of BC, uh, animation, digital uh, entertainment, visual effects. Did that for a couple of years, worked with politicians, trying to educate them about the potential for these industries and how they can help support it. Uh, and then I found it, Van Arts had a part-time teaching position. I started doing work here, doing digital marketing and online business development, teaching students what I knew about those worlds. And uh, eventually uh, there was a marketing position that came open and I said, I really like this school. I like the people behind it. Um, It's an amazing school with a great reputation and it deserves to get wider audience. And so that's why I took this job. And so my job is to try and beam out as much information um, about the great instructors and the fantastic students and the work do and the accomplishments the 
Phil's been doing for 25 years. And then I get to teach social media um, in Martin's broadcasting department and also uh, digital marketing in the uh, web. Long walks in the beach, uh, glasses of red wine, the color green, um, you know, the early uh, uh, first season of Star Trek episodes before it got crazy. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So now we know who everyone is. And uh, and Luke's back. Very cool. Your wife <laughs> just pocket dialed me, Martin. So I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. She, she called me too. <laughs> okay. Well, she, either way. So I think you have to about My phone rang. I'm expecting a couple of calls. I'm sorry while we're doing this, but your wife was not what I was expecting. Yeah, actually. that's weird. Hey. Okay. Wow. All right. Anyways. Secrets. So, okay. Uh, cool. All right. All right. So, um, so uh, people who are out there watching as well. Uh, we've all introduced ourselves. Um, so uh, we just wanted to take a moment to say, welcome everyone and introduce yourself and tell us who you are. If you are on YouTube, you can use the chat window on the right side or underneath your screen. If you are on Facebook, you can post a comment in Facebook and uh, tell us where you're watching from. Tell us who you are. Tell us where you live. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. And uh, we'd love to know um, who's watching. And if you have a question, we will be able to, um, our panel here will be able to take your questions as well. So if you have any questions at all about broadcasting, radio, TV, podcasting, video production, all the things that, that we teach at Van Arts, uh, throw us a question. We would love to, and we'll bring your question in and let these guys uh, duke it out as to who wants to answer it first. So yep. uh, feel free to go ahead. And, wages. Yep, sure. Yeah. How much money can I make doing this? All that good stuff. So interact. Interact with us. Post something, a comment, and a question, and let us know who you are. Mm -hmm. So uh, while you guys are doing that, why don't we go around and uh, we'll start with Martin again. Tell us a bit about what you teach in the, yeah. the broadcasting well, let, program. Let me really quickly, because you just heard from everybody. Uh, yeah. As well, there's a few people who are not there, like Julie teaches performance. Mm -hmm. But it's just an idea of what a well-rounded program it is. It's in in the old days. It used to be just a radio teach you, teach you how to be a radio disc jockey, but nowadays it's completely changed. The internet has changed broadcasting. So, so to be a real uh, broadcaster and take advantage of all these opportunities that you have, um, you need to know a little bit about video editing. Uh, you need to know definitely about social media. You need to know how that works and you need to know how to be in front of the camera, how to speak in front of a microphone. Uh, it depends what you want to do. Um, so I like to think we have it all covered. Um, the, the stuff that I teach that I specialize in writing and storytelling is a big part of, uh, the, the, that's the course I teach. Um, I'm all about storytelling, uh, no matter what it is, if it's news writing, uh, or podcast writing, or being a YouTuber, or any anything that involves uh, broadcasting to me is storytelling. It's all about telling a story. Advertising, uh, copywriting, we do a little bit of that. Um, but it's all about storytelling to me. Uh, and that's a big part of, of that. I, I mean, I've spent uh, many years writing news. Uh, news stories, but it was always for rock radio stations. So it wasn't like time for the news. It was just like, what's going on? Oh, this, this happened. Uh, this happened. And it's interesting. And so I, my style was very conversational and uh, I have a very um, specific sort of theory about writing for broadcast, how to write the way you speak. And I think it's something you can learn. Um, and a lot of people, especially people who've been to university, They've done a lot of university essay writing. It's like a habit they have to break out of these big, long winded sentences. And it's really fun to write for broadcast because, you know, short sentences, the way you speak, that's mm -hmm. that's what you want to do. Uh, so I teach that. And then uh, uh, 
you know, some uh, performance, how to be on the radio, how to, how to read a script, all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of um, uh, sort of the general uh, media operations, radio and TV stations, how that works, um, podcasting, um, and, you know, some general theory about media and broadcasting and how it's all disseminated. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I teach. Awesome. You're also the leader. You're also the leader of the program too, so that's yeah. the other thing too. That's a that's a well. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's something to you know. You sort of give a big picture view of broadcasting, yeah. and and if you're getting into this, like, what are you getting into, and how do you how do you take your personality and make it unique and and part of your brand that uh, an employer would want to bring you on board? Yeah, and I I think it's really important that I I feel kind of a responsibility to. To, to make sure people are, you know, prepared for, for what's out there. And there's lots of interesting jobs that we talk about, uh, you know, Patrick, we always talk about so the, the sort of new job that didn't exist a few years ago uh, was social media manager. And now every company, small, small companies, even um, they need a social media manager. They need someone at the very basic level to, to, put some tweets out once in a while and then, and then it gets bigger. They need people to make content for that. Um, you know, think of, you know, the Vancouver Canucks, for example, like mm -hmm. right now is an odd time, obviously, but uh, the Vancouver Canucks have a social media department. They have people like when the team goes to the, the children's hospital to visit the sick kids, they bring along a camera crew and that camera crew mm -hmm. is part of their social media team and they will make little videos sometimes they're like i remember once a couple of seasons ago the canucks went uh horseback riding and uh as a sort of a team building event and they filmed it and it was really funny and there were all these funny little youtube things and and that's a job and uh you're telling stories and you're creating content and that's broadcasting but it, there's just a million different ways that it's being disseminated. And it's all about the delivery of this content. And uh, so there's some really interesting uh, opportunities out there right now. And a lot of people, older people, they like to concentrate on, oh, it's, you know, radio, uh, you know, it's shrinking. Well, it, it, radio is still a viable uh, market. It still makes money for companies, but it's changing. And mm -hmm. the way people get that kind of, I mean, more people listen to audio content now than they've ever have. Um, yeah. There's more stuff being consumed um, now than they ever have. It's just different. The delivery system is different. They're, you know, it's a podcast or whatever. So it's all kind of melding in and I yeah. could go on about this forever. So I'll stop now. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Luke, you are there at the board. I am at the board right now. At the, yeah. at the yeah. uh, radio station. And that's so. kind of why I'm just taking a couple of notes there, just what Martin was saying, though. Yeah. And because uh, everything he said is a lie. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm just going to talk about what He's I'm telling kind the story. Of, I get it. Well, this is kind of what Martin and I are kind of like. I'm the uh, Costello to his Abbott kind of thing, you know, where <laughs> what I teach underneath Martin is. I'm the production guy. So it's like I teach what you guys, guys and gals want to learn how to basically produce. And I teach the softwares that we've got. We've got two softwares that are prominent still in radio. There's Burley, which uh, is still a radio software used all over the world, but particularly in North America and more importantly, used in every radio station in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, the other one, though, is Adobe Audition, where Scott will probably help me out a little bit a little bit later. But Adobe is like, it's it ain't going away. Like it's 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 a software that's here to stay. That mm -hmm. and and what my job is to show you guys is to how to uh, utilize audio and your voice and how to make your recordings sound awesome um martin brought up people saying oh radio is dying and something like that it's not by the way mm -hmm. but also there's other ways of there's other mediums of channeling your voice and your things through podcasting through all these different uh, areas and this is what i teach you is like if you listen to a podcast you're like how do they get that background music behind the thing i show you that how do we how do i uh make my voice louder than 
the music being too loud. Well, I show you that too, you know, but if you're really into stuff, then we can go like, oh, I really like this part of that song. How do I make it go over and over and over again behind my voice while I talk? Well, I teach you that too. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a really, really fun journey. And, uh, uh, but the other thing though that I teach as well is this baby right here, which is the board and how to actually, you know, with my experience with operating skills and stuff is you get to learn how to be an on-air personality, but also person your own board as well. Um, in professional radio, you usually have a person that's just on mic and then there's someone across the glass from you that handles all the all the stuff. I show you how to do both of those kind of things. Is you can be the person on the mic, but I've worked with people like I mean Martin and I are from background and we've worked with some old older, you know, award winning radio personalities that to this day don't know how to turn on their own microphone. You know what I mean? Like I'm sorry. Yeah. Like I mean sorry. I mean uh, I, I'm not going to name names, but there's like some broadcasts that like they wait for you to go. Ink. We want you coming out of here where you go. I know how to do that. I know how to do that. I know how to do that. Um, like you, um, the one thing I guess we could bring up without getting too technical, Martin, is Music Master, which is another software we teach you as well, which is the industry standard in radio, is how, mm. this, how your music is played and all that kind of stuff. And if you show up at a radio station and you know Music Master and you know Burley and all you're doing is just like maybe an intern job or something like that, you will be respected yeah. when you move up. You know, like Yeah, because we, we talk about this all the time. Music Master is, is the the software that kind of runs the station sort of automates the station after hours. And also when the station is on the air, it also sorts out the music and it does everything. And most of the radio state or all the radio stations I've ever worked at of all the people who work there, usually like two or three people know how to use music master mm -hmm. and we've got music master and we'll show you how to use it. Yeah. And there you go. And the coolest thing is we're, we're, we we know it, but there's always things to learn about. We're always learning it. Too. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you get to learn with us. You know, like there, there, there's there's some stuff behind it that we uh, we actually had a, a student last year that kind of went, "Hey, did you know that it did this?" And we, Marta were like, "Holy cow!" <laughs> like, and then it was like, "Oh, good lord, this is awesome!" And then you know what I mean? Like, now that's a, might not be a good selling point, but either way, I'm just saying that the software is always, always, always evolving, and, and, and uh, that's and a good growing. point. Sorry to interrupt, Luke, but that's a great point because this is your radio station when yes, you're a student here. Absolutely. It's, it's not like you, you have permission to use it for a couple of hours. You can come in at nighttime and use it. You can come in anytime and it's your radio station. Yes. If you want to get on to Music Master, you get on to Music Master. And um, that's the key. And it's oh. and music. You have music meetings, Luke. Music, I, I was going to bring up music. I was going to bring up music meetings. So what we do every Tuesdays is we have proper professional music meetings, like they would at a top forty radio station. We sit down. We look at all of the charts across North America. Uh, we look at the Billboard Top One Hundred, but we also look at what's happening on Twitter, what's happening on TikTok. Like music, like, like we said, music has evolved than just being segregated to the radio we want to find out what is actually happening in other mediums and stuff and the thing is you guys program your own music at the station like we don't tell you what to play you tell us what to play mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of, there you kind go. of a cool thing you know awesome. within, re within reason <laughs> <laughs> all right cool so scott what courses do you teach the broadcasters well, sorry, was that directed to me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I didn't I'd cut out. Um, what do I teach? Um, I, I teach the production course um, and we cover audio and video. And that's the simplest way to put it. Um, we dive into um, yeah, Adobe Audition and learn how to um, treat audio. <clears throat> I kind of approach it because um, Luke and I sort of both teach aspects of that software so i focus more on um uh, audio cleaning like how to clean up audio if it's a little noisy and whatnot mostly in conjunction with video 
So <clears throat> a lot of our students, uh, when they're going out and shooting, uh, for instance, uh, on the street uh, report, um, and they might do something like that, and then um, you're going to have noise, you know, background noise and all that sort of stuff. So we use Audition to clean that kind of stuff up and bring it back into the video. <clears throat> we learn how to do newscasts, uh, which is great, um, and uh, it'll uh, edit those together, cut them together with uh, different uh, supporting video or imagery, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, we get into a little bit of um, uh, motion graphics. It's a nice little skill, for, especially for social media, to be able to have uh, flying titles and things like that can be great. Um, a lot of video editing, uh, color correction. Um, we get into green screen uh, for broadcasting, which is great. Uh, so not quite visual effects level stuff, but um, fantastic for humor um, and for uh, <laughs> newscasts. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with that. And uh, in, as the terms go on, we, we sort of uh, expand the, the, the realm of these uh, types of, of posts. So we're doing everything from, you know, short little uh pieces that might go on uh, Instagram or something like that uh, or YouTube and by the end of um, term three by the end of term three our students have produced a, uh, a, a base they, they've gone through the, the process of producing a documentary a short documentary mm. and so they know the basics of how to do that as well yeah and I think in a nutshell that sort of sums it up yeah yeah mm -hmm. good. Yeah, because it, it's really an interesting thing, because if you want to take it a little bit further in one direction, you can. And especially, you know, if, if video kind of catches your your fancy, you can uh, really get into that. And Scott can really help. And um, if I, I think if you want to be a, a radio announcer, if you know how to make a video, uh, you're, uh, you have a leg up on everybody else. You can make funny videos, put them online and it sort of promotes your brand as a radio announcer. And I think every, no matter your podcaster, if you can make funny little videos, uh, it's great. And mm -hmm. Scott's the man. Uh, for that. Yeah, absolutely. There you Love go. Them. Awesome. All right. And Patrick, tell us about the subjects you cover for the broadcasters. Uh, I, I, I talk a, a little bit about a dying medium called social media. It's on the way out, you know, how many people are using oh, no. it. Um, yeah, it's there might have been something called Instagram. Maybe your parents or your grandparents used it. Um, yeah, okay. So what I, I still do use is, Friendster. is you still use what one? Friendster. Oh, Friendster. Gosh. In the nineteen yeah, nineteen nineties Friendster, yeah. That's still a thing. Uh, <laughs> never mind me. My space I mean, I'm gonna mute myself now. Okay. Like I still don't have my space page. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Still yeah, they'll, they'll live forever. They'll live forever. Um but what I like about Martin and Luke and Scott going first is that all the stuff they're talking about, when you start off with like how do you tell a story? And how do you tell it with your personality? And then Luke gets into, okay, here's the skills to put all this stuff together from, from a technical side. And I'm also going to tell you my take on social, uh, on storytelling. And then Scott gets into, okay, here's like the video and the audio and all the cool stuff. And you make this and he inspires you. By the time they get to social media, I'm really excited because those students are learning all these skills. And I said, great, now you go out and you make yourself a brand. You make yourself indispensable. And some everybody comes into this program and they're slightly different, right? I, I, I say that the broadcasting program and the web program are kind of similar. They're kind of similar if they were two brothers or two sisters, they both have the same moms and dads. You can go into the web program and you can become a coder, a graphic designer, a project manager. Um, uh, you, you can become an internet marketer. There's lots of opportunities and you learn all those things at the school. It's the same thing with broadcasting. You want to come in here and you want to be uh, a DJ host. You're going to learn everything it takes to get into that world. Uh, you want to come out and you want to be a producer of audio or video. Awesome. We'll show you how to do it. You want to put together um, videos on YouTube and become an influencer. Awesome. You want to be a social media uh, uh, manager or strategist. Great. We'll show you how to do that so you can freelance that or you can make it for your own brand. And mm -hmm. the only thing that's stopping you is your ambition. 
It's, it's as crazy as that. And it is, it is as blue sky as that. And that's what I get really excited about, about this job. And I just get in there and I say, okay, here's how you use LinkedIn. Here's how you use Twitter. Here's how you use Facebook. Here's, here's what uh, other successful channels are doing. Let's uh, reverse engineer it. Let's uh, take it apart and see what they were doing. What worked here? What didn't work here? Uh, what do your employers want? What do they not want to have? And after you have all this information from these different places, like literally, it's like going out and coming up with your own style of Kung Fu. You know, uh, we have so many people that are going off and, and doing their own, blazing their own trail. It's really exciting to me. I get the most excited about people that are doing online um, brands or businesses of their own. Uh, the last person who graduated, um, Jess Garner, uh, he's mm -hmm. taken his podcast. He had like 70, 80 episodes. Brilliant idea. Him and his partner review the cover of a book without having read the book. And there's so many times that I bought a book and I thought it's going to be great and it turns out to be crap or it got the craziest cover on it and it's got nothing to do with the book whatsoever. Anyways, they're reviewing all this stuff and then they read the book later and they go like, how close were we? That's an amazing idea for a podcast. And the mm. guy, should be it should be like top 100. Um, and then and, and after learning what to do at here at Van Arts with the storytelling and then the social media side, he's got over 1,200 followers now on his Twitter account. And he's gone from under 100 to 1,200 in the space of like wow. two, two and a half months. And I just want to make sure they have all these skills and they're able to broadcast this stuff up because the talent that everybody has, whether they want to be that announcer or whether they want to be that video producer or that social media influencer, is able to be broadcast. So I contribute mm -hmm. my own way, but I feel like it's just polishing this cut gem that's already come down the, the, the pipe from the other instructors. And then they just sort of go, okay, now I know what I'm going to do with this thing. I've got all these skills and I'm going to run with it. And, and the other thing too is that really excites me is that you get out and you have marketable job skills that, that employers really want to have. Okay. That's the other thing. Like we're all middle-aged and we know what it's like, you know, we've learned the lesson of like what, what an employer wants from you too. You know, and and the great thing about being in the younger generation and this this shift over to digital or online is that a lot of, of older businesses are looking for people to come on board that have that key component that with that younger Gen Y, uh, you know, millennial look at here's how to integrate all this stuff together. They're tools. It's not separate and distinct from each other. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it all gets amalgamated in one. And I think the pandemic has only accelerated that process and made it more um, attractive for employers. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my sales pitch. That's also what I do here, and it's why I'm excited to teach in broadcasting. I think it's it, every week that I get hands on the students, it's it's immensely fun, and to see the creativity and the cool stuff that they generate is amazing. And then you hear about where they landed afterwards is really exciting. And yeah, that's what that's what it's about for my world here in the social media part of broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Cool. If I can yeah. actually just sidle on that one, Patrick, though, is one thing you brought up with the pandemic. Yes, obviously, we can't have as much interaction and stuff. But one thing for those interested in the radio side of things, Martin and I know a ton of people in radio and we have a lot of guest speakers in. And, stuff, and you will meet prominent yes. people that work for the CBC, that work for CFOX, that work for, like work in radio, mm -hmm. and they will tell you their stories are pretty similar because we're we all. It's like, well, I started out at this, but it's actually really, really, really amazing. And mm -hmm. we'll have in someone like uh, Amy Bell from CBC Early Edition, and she got she got the students excited about doing a. We found out how to write a story out of a two minute traffic report, you know, like that kind of thing, you know, like that kind of, you know, and, and all of these speakers that we get in, they take names and they, they remember you and stuff like that. You know, like, like, you know, um, so we've got kind of a, we got a pretty good Rolodex, I would say. Wouldn't you say, Martin? Like, yeah. Yeah. We just had like, uh, Holly from uh, Holly, Johnny and Nira. 
and Virgin mm-hmm. Radio. We had Drex yep. in. Yep, Drex um, is definitely, you know, he's, he's a good one. You know, like there are people, I mean, it's kind of dropped a little bit because I usually just, I used to just go, hey, come on in. And now it doesn't work. It, it's not as easy. For people <laughs> look at it, you know what I mean? Like we're just trying to zoom it up, you know, like that. Zoom it yeah. Up. Yeah. You come into the Zoom room. Exactly. You know, yeah. but, uh, but either way, though, like we do, you will meet people here if you, I mean, like, You'll meet important people in Vancouver radio, and if not, you know, almost Canadian wide radio as well. Yeah, so. yeah, and I would add, I would add on online too because uh, Jess was interested in growing his podcast, and one of the people I brought in uh, has a really successful Canadian podcast, and uh, invited Jess to come on to the show and do a little bit of a guest hosting and stuff like that. So right. it's it's not just good for networking; it's also good to to listen to people that you know as a brand already but you don't know their journey and then when you realize like there's these there's these bumps and these experiences they can relate at least to me it it made it a lot more identifiable like okay i can see how this could be a path a year or two down the road for me Mm. and and giving that sort of confidence and you know a little bit of insight into okay this is how it all comes together and you're going to find you know your own little uh, uh trajectory into this world, but here are some universal things that work really well to help you uh, relate to people or to make people go, okay, this is somebody I want on our team that's going to be beneficial to us. That type of stuff is is really, really critical for anybody that's starting off uh, a, a career in this industry to have that sort of a little, little bit of a roadmap projected ahead about where they could go. Sure. I agree completely, Patrick. And it's also one thing to be said about it is like for people that are just maybe dipping their toe into the scene is to show that it, it's not that intimidating. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like everybody kind of starts, yeah. you find out that everybody kind of starts the same way. And, you know, like, and, uh, you know, your ideas are up to you, but we'll give you the skills that can hone them a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Like, like even with myself, like when I first met Martin coming here, it's like this guy I've known for like twenty years on the radio. Like yeah. he's been everywhere. <laughs> like I, I, you know, voice, you know. And then he's like, "Yeah, yeah. How's it going? How's it going? I'm a chill person. I'm I'm an average person." And then you kind of get over that that leap, and it's like, "Oh yeah, okay, all right." And then you you realize what he's sort of doing with interacting and teaching with students. Um, but it is really, really great that journey that that student has over the 12 months of, okay, I'm here and I'm kind of a little shocked. And then they start getting into this stuff when they get all the information that you're teaching them starts developing in their head and they're realizing, okay, here's how I can do this for the, my love of classic music, or here's how I can do this for my love of my little pony and turn it into a brand. Exactly. Cool. All right, so for those of you who are watching, just a reminder, in the last few minutes of our time here, if you have a question, this would be the time to type it in. Uh, let us know um, if you have a quest, something you want to ask about. Let us know who you are, what kind of aspect of broadcasting. And, you know, it's interesting. One of the things, you know, you guys that we talk about a lot and when you guys have been bringing up is, you know, like the kinds of students that come into the program. They're all cut from different cloths, you know, and sometimes they might come in at the beginning of the year, they might think that they want to go into one thing. And then throughout the course of the 12 months, they kind of discover something else. And then they think, I didn't even know this was a thing that I could do and that I could actually. So how can I do that? And how can I actually monetize it? How could I make this into, you know, uh, a freelance thing or or a career path? And I know you guys talk about that a lot. So what are what are some of the things that have you've kind of the, what are some of the most surprising things that you guys have seen with students that have come in kind of with one sort of mindset and then they completely you know uh come out the other side with a different sort of view on the career and then they actually do something with that. The one that stories that come to mind. The one that comes to mind to me is Justin, actually, Martin. Uh, Justin, who is an actor. Mm-hmm. He, he came into this as an actor. And when he started taking the broadcasting program, he created an entire show called Se- 90s is the New 70s. And it was this incredible, incredible show. One-hour segment radio show. 
that just kind of any any found any dug up like old advertisements and old movie trailers and played nothing but music from the 90s and then interviewed people about what do you remember of the 90s because he was a younger he was really young in the 90s and but now in this generation the 90s is the new 70s like he's yeah jab at us maybe martin i don't know but uh like where it's like yeah it, like it, but and i and i don't think had he not come here i don't think he would have come up with that maybe idea mm -hmm. i'm not going to speak for him but i mean but he came up with a really really unique idea but it had nothing to do with acting at all you know what i mean like and he became a he's a really really good host and uh mm -hmm. you know that's that's the one thing that just came to my mind when you brought I that always, up i always find there's a lot of people uh who maybe are into radio even they don't think right. about uh, writing advertising copy yep. and there's always one person in every program sometimes more that is really good at it and they didn't even know they could do it uh writing commercials writing um, and we do a little bit of uh, um social media kind of copywriting as well but mm -hmm. a lot of people are discover copywriting as an example and i, I love that when they didn't even they, they didn't even know it existed that that a radio station a, will have a department of three people um sometimes mm -hmm. more uh, whose job it is to write commercials and because they hear the commercials they just assume they're they appear by magic but they're actually <laughs> that's a job you got to write them and the people who are good at it um have great careers at it or from the production angle example. it's like you get someone to read it and it's like well how does that commercial get made and there's someone in a booth that yeah. goes okay i've got the sound here and then the sound clip here and then your voice goes over here and then we put it together and it becomes a 30 second piece on the air you know like in yeah. that that's kind of and, and again that's back to what i teach kind of thing so mm -hmm. uh, and Scott, I bet you have a lot of examples of people who fall in love with video who didn't really think about that. I yeah, the, a number of them do. <clears throat> They'll find out that it's a lot more fun than they that they originally um, imagined, and uh, you know, and after after they get into the software and learn the, the the basics of the software, they start some of them start running with that and producing all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and I was just remembering, um, I, I was thinking about how we we do. Uh, touch upon like OBS and streaming as well. Um, it's it's a small aspect of it because a lot of what we're learning on how to uh, be a radio host or produce videos and, and things like that um, applies to online streaming as well. So we've got a bit into um, the open broadcasting system um, that's used by a lot of uh, streamers on Twitch and other uh, online stuff. So it's kind of a fun little area too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Twitch, Twitch is... Uh... I remember we had a, uh, a student, Tony, who who had a switch, a Twitch thing going, and he'd come like some weekends. He'd make a few hundred bucks, and it, he was growing his thing. I didn't even know what Twitch was, and now mm -hmm. now Twitch is kind of now you do. Hat, but, uh, but he's it, he's doing great too. He's still doing it. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it, Twitch to me is sort of like the closest thing to old fashioned radio in the internet age because mm. you're really just broadcasting yeah 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 he was he i, I actually follow him on 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 uh, twitch and he's yeah he's up to, to 3.7 thousand followers so it's, it's wow it's building it up building it up that's probably becoming um like he's probably making money on that on a regular basis i probably yeah i mean he was do, uh, even at school he was treating it like a part-time job yeah, uh, and now he's treating it more like a job. He's on, uh, I think, on every day, pretty much. Yeah, um, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised because he, I, he would have these sort of weekends. He would come, come back to school and go, yeah, yeah, I had a pretty good weekend, or, or I had a good month. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, what did you do? I streamed for like twenty hours. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we've had people that have, uh, you know, one. Um, won competitions to and and gotten internships to work Next at radio Sunday. store people doing radio work people doing podcasting um there's other stories i'm sure should we mention you just guys? naz yeah uh, yeah well, we Max, Max name drop I mean, name drop yeah well we had like a guy named naz and he graduated in september yeah uh, and uh, and speak of 
of him, he, his sort of passion became character voices and cartoon voices. He wanted mm. to do that kind of uh, uh, voiceover stuff. But he, uh, uh, they, they had a contest at um, uh, Z95. Yeah. Z95 and uh, Kid Carson it was a big morning show. Kid Carson, they were trying to promote the morning show. So they had this contest where you can become Kid Carson's next intern and you win $10,000 as a grand prize. And then you become his intern for three months and you go on the radio and it's kind of like survivor. You, you go on the radio and you get a, <laughs> a challenge and you got to go make a video about something. And, and uh, all these people, bunch of young people fight tons of them fighting it out Can i say uh, martin three students were finalists yeah three, three men are students were finalists for that Marais, that right, yeah and and, and nas but nas, nas won. won actually it was four was four. it uh was one of our acting grads from our acting oh, okay. so was uh, running through. yeah that's funny that's, that's interesting. Cool. So, there so you go. We, were, we were kind of proud of that and yeah. uh, we max monday she's uh she can, yeah. like, she's now a producer about, at CBC for one thing. Talk about students who, like you talk about students who veer off and discover something new. Max wasn't like that. Max came in, she was a podcaster. Yeah. And she wanted to be a podcaster. So we yeah. helped her and she did. She left her final project was a seven part podcast about uh, drag, the history of drag culture in Vancouver. She, mm -hmm. she did this beautiful podcast it, it was on apple music and spotify and all that she got she was interviewed in the vancouver sun as well as another online paper uh she, so she was getting press for it it was just a great it thing also went, work that show went students. nationally uh, syndicated across campus community radio and yeah. she won an award last year from the national campus community radio association yeah. um for best podcast as well mm -hmm. like, so there you go. That's awesome. Yeah. That's another one of our, that's from last September, our grad. Yeah. She's learning sure. to skateboard, by the way. You if you you guys, her. Sorry, hmm? I don't know if you guys have heard, uh, Morel is hired by Egypt's biggest um, FM radio station. She's the morning yeah. host, right? Yeah. And 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 she she came in and she knew what she wanted to do too. She wanted to be, well, she was a singer. And she wanted to be <clears throat> an online brand. And so after she left here, she um, she uh, uh, a co-starred, co-sung, I don't know how you would describe it, um, a video with, with one of uh, a, a very large, uh, well-known um, Middle Eastern uh, guy whose name escapes me because I'm not from the Middle East. But she had like 4 million views on the, on the video for that. And mm -hmm. it... Supercharged her Instagram. She's got like twenty six thousand followers on it now. Oh, yeah. She's doing um, a Nile FM, which is like Egypt's biggest uh, FM station over there. Um, and she just got engaged. She just got engaged. Yeah. It's oh, on her hey. Instagram. Oh, Instagram. oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, she looks That's like great. her hair is still the same. It's yeah, she had the big. Oh, yeah. she, had, she had the best fro yeah. ever, man. She had the best yeah, hair. Yeah. Her, her Instagram post is Afro Mountain Girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's like, you you look at her Instagram, and she's like two steps away from like a million followers. Like it's literally wow. like that. It's like oh, yeah. people going like, oh, it's so beautiful, it's so beautiful. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, nice. but there's lots, there's lots of these people, there's lots of these stories, and that's what really jazzes me up is like I can see, like like with Jess, I can or Nazar. Like Nazar came in, he also he also wants to make an animated sci-fi uh yeah. series. That's what he was telling me about, right? And then he got into the radio show, and then he blew me away by winning uh the internship. But that's because mm. he's got hustle. Like he just yeah. throws energy and stuff, right? And and you need to do that. But it really excites me to hear about all these dreams and how you can help push people towards them. And then you see that start happening a year or two or three years down the road. That's a really cool feeling to be mm -hmm. part of that in some way. Um, and there's always really interesting stories coming in all the time. I always look forward to the next batch of students coming in because someone's going to say, I want to be like a television host or, you know, there's, uh, there's one of our students right now. Uh, they want to make it big. They've done some some work in the area, and they've said, "This is where I want to go. This is what I want to be." 
I don't know if it's television. I don't know if it's radio. I don't know if it's online, but boom, I'm going in that direction. I'm going to land on that continent. I'm going to make my own, you know, community from this thing. Um, and that stuff is cool because there's tons of opportunities. You can make your own opportunity with the skill, with the knowledge and with your passion. The passion's the most important thing. Yeah. Nice. Very, very cool. All right, so we're coming up close to an hour here with our with our show. So we'll we'll come close to. Uh, don't have any questions from our viewers, but we know I can see on the viewer counter there's people popping in and out, and there's people watching. So this is your last chance, I, I, folks, to uh, be throw shy. us a comment. I know some people have I said that uh, like we have to hear for a fix of Hastings. Some people are saying good morning. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. And Everybody you know, loves Scott, as focus. you can see. Scott has Scott's his a very fans popular here. guy. Scott, yeah. Scott's like, Scott is like the original Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica. He's yeah, that guy. Yeah. It was just going to be a fun episode. Dirk, uh, what, was, what was the original yeah. story? Dirk yeah. something. He was on the A-team. Dirk, Dirk Benedict. Dirk Benedict. Dirk Benedict. Wasn't he the, the face on the A-team? Yes, he was. He's the same guy. Exactly. Yeah, that's Scott. Yeah, like that's it, right? That's it. Is, is Battlestar Galactica yeah, the I, one with I, I, the, It was the Apollo. It, that was the Glenn A. Larson fake Star Trek. With the little yeah. robot played by Mel Blank, the voice of Bugs Bunny. Oh, that's Buck Rogers. It's Buck Rogers. Oh, Buck Rogers. Yeah, yeah. Buck Rogers. And by the way, pop culture, this is where, by the way, you get to see no, this. Buck. Pop culture time. That little dude that played Twiggy just passed away, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yes, the same yeah. guy who did Cousin yeah. It on the other You are correct, sir. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, I'll take, oh, I'll I take didn't realize that was three facts for 300. Um, hey. Just want to quick say hi to Marijan out there. He's one of my former students in web. Uh, oh, yeah. Marijan, hope you're doing well. See your stuff online. You're still playing. Yeah, he's got the guitar. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's still making sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, guys. So as we wrap things up, sort of some final final comments about the the future of broadcasting and online media. Like what what do you think is next and what do you think? Oh boy. What do you think is out there that maybe hasn't? What's the most the newest emerging thing that? Uh, well, overall, the you're gate, seeing the gatekeepers have left the building. We know that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it used to be if you wanted to get some, you wanted to broadcast, you had to make a TV or a radio commercial, and you had to go knock on the door of the radio station or whatever. You don't have to do that now. Now you, mm -hmm. you, there are so many things, but we kind of already know that. That's kind of um, so. I think. I'll leave that up to you. To, uh, maybe I'll leave that up to you guys. Things like I think for me, uh, Twitch is really interesting uh, mm -hmm. because, like I say, I know a few people who used to do radio shows, and now they do a show on Twitch, and it's mm -hmm. it's basically they're doing a radio show. Uh, and really, with all of this, um, what's what's happened because of the the. Um, <clears throat> pandemic is that everyone like so many more people have had to go online uh broadcast their faces and so the the whole uh, uh, um this online interaction is now a, a, like sort of ingrained in, in in everyone's lives you know where mm -hmm. um you know two years ago my mother probably never would have been on a on a zoom chat but now you know it's every week and and uh, um and all that kind of fun stuff so it, these are uh, neat um, it's it's neat how it's changing that way um, in terms of how com more comfortable people are going to be with video chatting and online and interaction that way. The other thing about the future of uh, broadcasting in general that I think it's going to be really interesting is going to be uh, Mars radio. Oh. Huh? Because the first settlers on Mars are going to you know, have their station and they're going to they're going to be broadcasting and you got to move. It's only, right? only going to play gotta gotta they're gonna want, They're going to want content. They're going to want content. They're going to want to wait 40 minutes. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it, yeah. That, is, that is a good point. But, of course, Or Orson Welles was onto that a long time ago. Good point. Yeah. Uh, we have a teacher that explains – we we have a teacher at Van Arts that tells us that story, actually. Yeah. Uh, we Sorry, who is our, radio, who's our historian? Charles. Yeah, Charles. Charles. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, Charles. I, I forgot, I forgot his I tell that story in my web class. You know, like yes, it's a great, it's a great story. Um, yeah. In answer to that Original one, Ken, uh, 
is um, I think the fact that accessibility to recording has become a lot more easier. Uh, mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that sometimes it just sounds like garbage if you're doing it at home. And yeah. what we're going to teach you here is how to make it, even if you're doing it at home, if you want, you know what I mean? Like we can make you sound a little bit better. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't want to just listen to a guy. It sounds like in their bathroom going, Hey, you're listening to the whatever podcast about what I'm interested in. We can actually make it, even if you're doing it in your bathroom, we can give you kind of the tools to make it sound. Yeah. And that's what I consider the future of media is there's going to be a lot of people. It's we're back to the old do it yourself kind of thing. But we have all this technology at our at our disposal. But how do you use it? And how do mm -hmm. you use it properly? And how do you make it accessible and listenable? And you know, like well produced. So yeah, you know, like that's 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 kind of. I mean, I see the future of of, of broadcasting. Everyone's going to do it, but only a few. It's like uh, putting a bunch of crackers in a sieve, and uh, you know, like the. The, the crumbs are going to fall out really quickly and the ones that are going to last are the ones that sound good, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. But... All right. It's true. And Patrick, like you have the last word here. I, I want to go back to, uh, to what, what uh, Martin said at the beginning that it's about storytelling. I think that there's, yes. you know what, there's this huge difference and no difference between mm -hmm. broadcasting as it is today and what it was 20,000 years ago. And by that, I mean, people would sit around a campfire and they would tell stories. They would yeah. tell stories that can make you survive or be amused or make you cry or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And we still want those stories today. Like you look at YouTube channels and it's it's guys that, that are blowing up water balloons and filming it in, you know, one one hundred thousandth of a second. And they got millions of views <laughs> and they're extremely successful channels. You know, you've got you've got people that are making like superheating, like you know, giant pieces of metal and dropping them in, in in ice towers to hear what the effect is, right? You've got ASMR videos going. I mean, going back 20 years ago when I had my movie website, I was talking about movies in production, uh, movies that were in production or script phases. People back then said, "No one's interested. No one cares about a movie that's a year and a half down the road." And now people are talking about movies a year and a half to 10 years down the road. So, yeah. Whatever that unique thing is you like, I don't care what it is, like there's five things that you like that you think no one else will care about, you can find your tribe online that will go nuts for the content mm -hmm. you make. And all you got to learn is how to do the storytelling, whether it's yeah. video, audio, the inflection of voice, what you write, it doesn't matter. And that's where you can get, you know, we can hopefully take you in and say, cool, you really like Pez dispensers? Okay, and you really want to make a pot? <laughs> we'll also teach you how to increase your Wi Fi capability. Yeah. <laughs> what you need to do, listen to Luke. He's going to tell you what to do. Listen to Scott, right? I know that right. myself. Yes. Patrick, you there? Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, here we go. Back now. All this energy is choking the internet, All right, yeah, taking over. That's great. Cool. Well, thanks a lot, you guys, for uh, for for chatting and, and sharing. You know your your passion for the the medium and 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 storytelling and all this kind of stuff. Um, if I was going to go back to school, I've always say I would take this program because um, I I have a bit of a background in radio myself, and uh, I I love getting into that stuff and and chatting with you guys about it. You know, when when I come into work, it's always a lot of fun to have you guys around. So. Uh, so to wrap things up, I will post just a couple of links into the chat, the page for the broadcasting program. Um, if any of you guys who are watching, you're still with us. If you click on that link there, it'll take you to our broadcasting page. It'll tell you all about the program. Um, our next start date coming up is in September. Uh, our admissions advisors can help you through that whole process. Uh, if you click on apply now, you can actually start your application. And um, if you have any questions at all about admissions, uh, admissions at vanarts.com is the email you can write to. And then someone from our, our lovely admissions department will get in touch with you. And uh, if you want to sit in on, a, on an online class, 
uh, sit in on one of the Zoom classes um, with our instructors here and just kind of pop in and listen and, and see what the class is like. Uh, our admissions people can set that up. And if you want to, you want to, you know, check it out and talk with talk with us more. Uh, feel free to reach out, and uh, we can carry this dialogue even further. Cool. Thanks for hosting, Ken. Oh, yeah, my, you, my Ken. pleasure. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Great you guys. To you all. Yeah. Good okay. broadcasting, yeah. Ken. All right. Cool. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Okay. Have a good night, folks. Right. See you, everybody. See thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Um, take care.